That is, think they're the most important thing in T20 cricket. Well, I've got a stat for you which is going to rip their bales off on Hogs Vlog. Well, we'll go through the stat, then a few tips on how to bowl in dewy conditions and who's got the best bowling lineup in the semi finals of this T20 World Cup. Now, the stat. I've been looking past uh, or looking out past T20 international matches and T20 World Cups as well as the fixtures or the results in this tournament so far. And one thing stands out like dog's balls. It's not the team who wins with the most runs, we all know that, but the team who loses the least amount of wickets in a game 80% of the time comes out on top. Now, what does that say? Does it say the batting team that can hold their nerve and uh, be a little bit more conservative at the top end, holding wickets in hand at the back end, dominate proceedings? Or does it say that teams with the best bowling attack that are able to dominate opposition batting attacks come out on top? Well, I'm looking at past teams that I've been involved with and the ones that have been most consistent in winning tournaments, winning games, getting in finals, have the best bowling attacks. They have a good balanced attack where you've got some good swing bowlers up front, some quality spinners in the middle, and some very good death bowlers. And it's no doubt that in this T20 World Cup, the teams that are in the top four at the present moment have the best bowling attacks. Now, just going to head down to the ground now and give you a few tips on how to bowl in dewy conditions under lights. I'm taking you outdoors tonight in the evening because this is when the dew takes effect. Early on in the uh, innings, in the first couple of overs, there's not much there, but then it builds up in the latter stages. And as a spinner, it can get quite slippery, so you have to change your ways. And it took me a very long time to work this out. Um, very late on my career, so probably the last two years that I was playing cricket, I worked out a strategy to bowl leg spin in the dew. Now, firstly, you've got to make sure you have long sleeves with a little sweatband down here to catch the sweat off your arms because of the humidity, and uh, you don't want the drips coming down onto your hand onto the ball as you let go of it, and it slips out. You don't get that grip on the ball. Uh, The other thing is you change your stock ball. Generally, when you're on dry conditions, you want to bowl as many leg spinners as you can, the wrong one, the toppy. Uh, but in the evening, I go to the back spinner, where the ball comes out of the back of the hand, and you're trying to get the revolutions coming backwards. And you bowl cross seam, so if it hits the seam, it might hold up. And if it hits the shiny surface, it will skid on. Remember, the pitch is going to have uh, a bit of moisture on it as well. But the other thing is I'm slightly shorter than the uh, normal length that I bowl. Uh, when I bowl normally one, two, three, four steps from the uh, stumps, I'll just go another half a step because I'm trying to bowl out the stumps, stump to stump, and I'm trying to hit middle stump because if I'm not slightly shorter, it's very difficult to sh- uh, sweep off that uh, length. Remember that the, when you're bowling these skiddy deliveries, it's not going to bounce as much, but that shorter length prevents the batsman from sweeping. Also, it's very difficult to hit down the ground off that length. And if you want to play the cross bat shots, well, that's when the LBs and the bolds come into play and they're going to be your big modes of dismissal. Now, if you want to bowl off spin, you can do something very similar, but off spinners, we tend to go over with the seam as such or even cross seam. But like Shakib, just try and bowl a source of delivery, which is flat and it hits that shiny surface and it will skid on a lot quicker uh, onto the stumps and it will be very hard for the batsman to pick up and your variation will be that seam delivery and hopefully every now and then it hit that seam and just slightly hold up so the batsman can't get into rhythm of hitting that ball off that good length. If you're a pace bowler, well for me I think you've got to bowl as uh, quick as you possibly can on that good length uh, cross seam. So same thing with the spinners, if it hits the shiny side, it goes quick. If it hits the seam, it might just hold up so that the batsman can't get into that rhythm. But you're attacking that middle stump because, again, the ball's a little bit lower on these UOE wickets. And if they want to play those cross bat shots with the extra skid, it's going to be very difficult for the batsman. But your change up is a slower delivery and you need a change up delivery where you don't bowl it into the pitch as much 
you've uh, got to have that one that dips. And the only bowlers that I've really seen that are successful on a slower ball that dips are Malinga and Boomer. So young, fast bowlers out there, you might want to go and look out some footage of those two uh, particular bowlers when they're bowling out the death and those slower Yorkers where the batsman thinks it's going to be a full toss then all of a sudden it just goes bang, drops right on that uh, Yorker length. And it's a bit like a knuckleball in baseball. So they're the little tips under dewy conditions that I can give to you. Um, but it's all about trial and error. And what about you head down the nets when there's a few lights around like this or in the streets, there's a bit of dew on the grass and see what deliveries you can, uh, you can master to be able to counteract those dewy conditions in the evening. Because it's uh, all about TV rights. Things aren't going to change. You're going to be playing a lot of games in first class level uh, under those conditions. Anyway, let's go and uh, have a look at what I've got for you just for a quick review of the two semi-finals coming up. It's time to have a quick look at the T20 World Cup semi-finals. We'll go to England first. Now, they've lost Roy, but I think that is going to allow them to have better balance in their team going into the finals, something that they didn't want. But Roy going out will bring Milan opening the batting, Ali coming in out three, Bairstow four, Livingston five, Morgan six, and then they'll have Willie, the all-rounder, out number seven. What that does, they don't lose much with the batting because Rashid, as well as Wokes and Jordan, can handle the bat, but they get extra bowling depth. And what they can do with Willie is utilize him with the new ball because he's a very good swing bowler. And if he can bowl a couple of overs up front, it allows Jordan to bowl more overs in the back end where he's strong and uh, takes a little bit of pressure off Wood as well, having to think about being more economical than just bowling that sheer pace where he's got that great wicket-taking ability. Now, for me, I think the strength here is how Rashid and uh, Ali are going to be used. Yes, they want to use Ali in the power play overs, but he's bowling up against Mitchell and Guptal, who are both right-handers. So that adds another chapter in, or another reason to bring Willie in because you can have Willie and Wokes open the bowling. And if they get an early breakthrough uh, or uh, where they get a couple of early wickets, then they can have Ali bowling against the left-handed Conway in those middle overs where he'll be more useful. So that's the uh, the key there. That's another reason why I'd bring in Willie. Now, um, with New Zealand, they've got Bolt, and this is going to be the key matchup. Oh, I think uh, he's the leading wicket taker out of all the quicks, the best quick that's going around in this World Cup at the moment. And his matchup with Butler is key. He likes to swing the ball in the Butler, but he'll get in with the ball, the straighter one. Butler will be looking for that in swing, but as that one goes straight, it doesn't come in. Butler will chase it and nick it off to Conway and the first slip early on, and that will give uh, New Zealand the leeway to win this game. The other matchups is Sodi against Livingston in the middle overs. That will be a big matchup. Whoever gets on top of there will help their team win, and I'm backing Sodi, and I'm backing New Zealand to win this contest. Now, let's go over to Pakistan and Australia. Now, this is a game that I did not want to happen. I wanted Australia to be playing New Zealand. That would have been a better matchup because Pakistan's opening bowlers against Finch and Warner is a big headache for me because Shaheen Afridi swings it away from Warner with that straighter one. Warner playing away from his body has got a chance of an edge or the gap between bat and pad bowled. And he's not as comfortable against left arm quicks like that than he is to right arm quick. So that is a big headache for me. And the other one is Wazim bowling to Finch with those left arm arm balls. Finch is not very confident against that, and that is a key matchup for me uh, to determine whether Australia win or lose the match. The other matchup will be where is Ralph going to be utilised in those middle overs because Australia will be hoping that Maxwell gets to face Hassan Ali and Shadab, uh, Shadab Khan uh, the majority of his batting phase because that, that is a type of matchup where Maxwell can take the game away from Pakistan. So that is a key uh, matchup there. So if they have enough overs for Ralph, then they, uh, Pakistan can really get on top of Maxwell. But if Ralph has been used too much 
and they need him to bowl a couple of overs out to death uh, in the final two overs, then Maxwell can comp- capitalise there. Then we look at the bowling. It's Mitchell Stark, Australian bowling. Mitchell Stark up against Rizwan and uh, Babra Azam. These two particular Pakistan batsmen have batted or made the majority of Pakistan's runs in this particular tournament. So this is going to be a big one. Mitchell Stark likes to bowl full, try and get the ball to swing. If it doesn't swing... Rizwan and Babar Azam can take the game away from Australia here. And if that happens, then Australia have only got three other frontline bowlers to try and get on top of Pakistan because they'll have to use the likes of Maxwell, Stoinis and Mitchell Marsh or part-timers against the quality Pakistan batting lineup. And then Malik against the spin of Australia as well is a big key because uh, if I'm looking at that Pakistan lineup, Malik is the biggest threat against spin um, that I've seen over the years. So, they are the key matchups for me. So, Australia to win from the heart, but Pakistan on paper have probably got the better matchup. So, uh, New Zealand to win the first game, and Pakistan, as I said, have the better team on paper to beat Australia, but I'm hoping that or I am still going for Australia. But that's what I've got for you. Now, the question is who's more important, the batters or the bowlers? Now, batsmen. If you comment downstairs saying it's the batsman, I'm not going to reply to you, okay? Definitely not going to reply to you. But, hey, stay safe, enjoy the finals, and uh, I'll catch you later, troopers.